Wolverine. You're damn straight it is. Disney brought him back. They're going to make him do this till he's 90. Welcome back, everyone. Maximum effort. I had a chance to see Deadpool and Wolverine. This will be my non-spoilery review. I know there's going to be all kinds of questions on whether or not it delivered on the hype. There was so much hype. Whether or not it was just a glorified cameo fest of classic X-Men actors. What was it like getting Hugh Jackman back as Wolverine wearing the actual yellow suit from the comics to boot? And whether or not Ryan Reynolds' Deadpool will really wind up being the Marvel Jesus that he claims to be in the actual movie. Of all the upcoming Marvel movies that we've known about the last few years, this has probably been the one that I've been looking forward to the most. I think a lot of people have been looking forward to this movie more than any other thing that Marvel has announced recently. Just because it had so much potential, then we saw all the trailers and there were just a lot of questions like what is this movie actually going to be? The reason why I've been looking forward to it so much is because it had all the potential there to totally fix every major creative complaint against Marvel since Avengers Endgame. And there have been many, many complaints. And the movie actually gives Marvel a direction to go in like an actual direction where they felt pretty rudderless since Avengers Endgame, just trying a whole bunch of stuff, seeing what sticks. Basically using the shotgun method, we're just going to try a whole bunch of new characters and just see what people like. Ryan Reynolds and Hugh Jackman cooked. We will make a lot of comparisons to the first Iron Man movie with Robert Downey Jr. because just like Robert Downey Jr. sort of becoming Iron Man so that you can't really untangle the characters, he's so completely become that character that you only associate it with him. You can't imagine anyone else playing the character. It's the same phenomenon with Ryan Reynolds and Hugh Jackman, Deadpool and Wolverine. Like you just can't imagine somebody else playing the Deadpool character. Deadpool and Wolverine sort of crystallizes a lot of their direction going forward. Kevin Feige literally, as the movie was getting ready to come out, said that the movie is meant to be the beginning of the mutant saga in the MCU. Now, I don't know how literal he meant that comment. He might have been speaking more metaphorically. We'd all had a lot of theories that the mutant saga would be like the successor to the multiverse saga. Like you have the Infinity Saga, Marvel Phase 1, 2, and 3. You have the Multiverse Saga, Phase 4, 5, and 6. And then everything after that would just start the mutant saga with them doing more core X-Men based stuff. But after this movie, it definitely feels like they accelerated their plans to do that. Like, you know what? This is actually a really fertile area just in terms of story, characters, so much potential here. Why don't we just make a beeline for all the stuff that people are really looking forward to? There's so much to talk about. If you're brand new to the channel, we're also doing a giveaway for movie tickets. All you have to do to enter is be a subscriber and just post all your reactions to the movie in the comments. Since we're trying to do a non-spoilery type of video here, please don't post overt spoilers if you do get a chance to see the movie early, but there is a post credit scene. I feel like that's not a spoiler to say that you need to stay after the credits. It would be weird if you went into a Deadpool movie that referenced literally everything that could possibly be referenced, every meta thing that it could possibly do, and did not have a post credit scene. I will do a totally separate video for that later this week and a full breakdown video with the many, many, many Easter eggs and references. So make sure to go see the movie as soon as humanly possible. Don't wait a couple weeks. Don't wait for it to come out on home video and Disney Plus. Rush to your closest theater as soon as possible. Starting with probably one of the biggest elephants in the room, everybody's been seeing all the trailers, the billions of cameos from all the classic Fox Marvel movies, cameos from other legacy movies pre-MCU, and a lot of present day MCU stuff mixed together. And one of the highest compliments I could give this movie is that it manages to balance all that met all those cameos, all that craziness, and still maintain the heart of that original Deadpool movie. Only nine people, but my entire world is right here in this picture. And I have no idea how to save it alone, but you, you know how to save it. Like this movie is the real multiverse of madness that we always wanted to get when we saw those Doctor Strange multiverse of madness trailers. The movie absolutely trashes the Multiverse Saga movie, so if you've been looking forward to Deadpool making fun of all those, he definitely does that. Going into it, I thought of it as more of a swan song for a lot of the classic Fox Marvel movies just because so much of the movie trades on the comedy of the Fox movies being defunct now that the MCU has all those characters back. There's even a lot of direct jokes in the movie about that specifically. But even though it clowns on a lot of that fact, like you're not wanted Fox Marvel actors, all these legacy actors, we're going to be recasting all these new people in these new Marvel movies. It still manages to do them great honor. It treats all the characters very well. But everyone, everyone gets clowned on. Everyone in real life associated with these movies, the entities like Disney, Fox, Ryan Reynolds, Hugh Jackman, making fun of themselves throughout the entire film. Some of these things are probably the reason why this movie succeeds in doing what She-Hulk, for instance, tried to do but failed. They found a way to keep the focus on the actual character journeys throughout the movie while all this crazy stuff is going on around them, multiverse style. 
And one of the big problems, I think, recently the last several years, you have a lot of Marvel movies since Endgame, Phase 4, Phase 5, Phase 6, starting to lose their way, getting buried under the spectacle of it all. Marvel's biggest weakness has probably always been its actual scripts. Mostly because, even going back to that first Iron Man movie, they never really had a finished script before they started filming any of the movies. James Gunn's Guardians of the Galaxy movies are probably the exception to that just because he writes them himself and, in this case too, Ryan Reynolds is one of the main writers of the movie. Now he isn't the only writer, big reminder that the writers of the original Deadpool movies came back to actually write on this too. Which I think is one of the ways why they're able to maintain the core Deadpool character while this is all going on. Like they're trying to bring him into the MCU, trying to do all these other things, call out the MCU just in general, course correct the MCU heading forward into the next Avengers movies. So under any other group of writers, the movie probably would have failed. Really good example of this phenomenon is Infinity War and Avengers Endgame. Don't really have scripts, just like a collection of notes they scribble out every single day and give to the actors when they're trying to work through scenes. If it hadn't been the Russo brothers and all the Marvel actors who'd been doing these movies and playing these characters for so many years on all different sides of the equation, like all the creative people involved in making the movies had been around these for so long, those movies could have been a shadow of their former selves. So because they just carried a lot of the original Deadpool movie creative team forward to make this movie, it manages to combine that Infinity War level spectacle. I think Infinity War is probably a better comparison than Endgame, just in terms of the vibe, even though there are many Endgame references specifically in the movie. Combining that with the heart and soul of the first Deadpool movie, which is a way smaller film. And even though it uses a lot of the cameos for just general comedy, it pays each of the characters that it uses for those cameos with great honor. Which I think is why it's so easy for a character like Deadpool and Wolverine, for instance, to get away making fun of everyone so much without getting the same hate that, say, like She-Hulk gets, because it treats all these characters with a lot of respect. Of course, there's all kinds of Disney references, Fox jokes, Marvel Kevin Feige specific references, literally every joke, like I said, about any person or any entity in real life, any previous Marvel movie that could be made fun of gets made fun of. No one is safe from being clowned on in this film. Least of all Ryan Reynolds and Hugh Jackman. In fact, I don't think it's a spoiler to say because they put it in one of the recent trailers, but in the movie, Hugh Jackman's Wolverine actually calls Deadpool God's perfect idiot while Deadpool spends most of the movie making fun of Hugh Jackman's Wolverine. You really are God's perfect idiot, aren't you? The answer is yes. Just a little taste of how meta the jokes get because that line is taken from the first Deadpool movie intro scene where the writers of that film, writers of this film as well too, called Ryan Reynolds God's perfect idiot. You have to remember, going into this movie, I think it's better to say any reference or connection to anything in real life and within the Fox X-Men universe of movies, any other Marvel movies or different cinematic universes, because it does reference other cinematic universes as well too, all gets referenced and sort of mixed into the same bucket thanks to the TVA. So if you love that aspect of Deadpool, like the meta nature, they really take that to 11 in this movie. Like it really goes crazy. It's going to take me like four days to try and make my breakdown Easter eggs video. I'll have to watch the movie like 10 times to catch everything. Thankfully, Kevin Feige, Bob Iger, like all the actual heads at Disney and Marvel, let them keep their very hardcore R rating. That was never in question. Kevin Feige made a big deal about that, letting them do what it is that they do. He also said the success of this movie opens the door for more similar R-rated movies in the MCU just in general with other characters. Without getting into spoilers, he makes a lot of very special references to other really big Marvel characters, so you just kind of wonder what that means about the actual canon if he knows these other characters. Like, when did he meet these other people? Like I said, lots of references to other cinematic universes. Just talking about the actual script in the story a little bit, the TVA was probably a brilliant move for them to bring all this stuff together and bring Deadpool to the MCU while also solving a lot of Kevin Feige and Marvel's current problems with the MCU movies and shows just in general. Sean Levy, the director, said that some of that wound up being coincidence. Like, you think some of the references are about specific things that happened the last year or two, but he says they actually wrote the movie a couple years ago, so there will be some things in the movie that just happen to work out that way for the benefit. But Marvel's had it bad the past few years. Movies, shows not doing well, actors being arrested, then fired. They banked two separate massive Avengers movies on Jonathan Majors, Avengers 5, Avengers 6, and then outright fired him. Talk about debacle. Like, how do they recover from something like that? Then along comes Deadpool, the opportunity to answer how they're going to recover from this whole mess. Deadpool is just as good at fixing problems as he is making them himself. 
One of my favorite concepts in the movie, and this is true of all Deadpool movies, is that no matter what you do, Marvel, good, bad, things that succeed, things that fail, it's all good as long as they call themselves out on it. And Deadpool is the character to hang a lampshade on that. He's the person to call them on all their bullcrap. You do all this crazy stuff through Marvel Phase 4, Marvel Phase 5, some of it works, some of it doesn't, but Deadpool comes along and just takes the piss out of everybody, himself included. The movie itself also serves, as you would expect, as a commentary on superhero films just in general, like the state of superhero films, cinematic universes like the MCU, but also on what the legacy of a lot of these characters and actors are in general, these people who used to be in all these big Marvel movies back in the day. And a big part of that, obviously, that storyline is carried by Hugh Jackman's Wolverine. In the movie, he's playing Wolverine from another universe who is a failure as opposed to the main version of Wolverine he's been playing for all these years through the Logan movie, who in the movie is held up by Deadpool as the greatest X-Man of all time. It was a dream to see Hugh Jackman in that yellow comic book suit finally. I'm sure most of you at some point have seen a bunch of Hugh Jackman's other non-Marvel movie stuff. He's fantastic in everything, like he's a great song and dance man. He is like the EGOT of the Marvel Universe. He has won every single award that you could possibly win. And even though it didn't wind up in the movie, they actually thought about making him do a full-on song and dance number in his Wolverine suit in the film. I'm kind of glad that they didn't. That would be ridiculous. Maybe they did like a bonus feature or like something separate that wasn't part of the actual movie for that. He's been talking a lot recently about why he chose to come back as the Wolverine character. There's just so many other directions to take the character that they didn't do in the past. A lot of the movie is also paying off a lot of deleted scenes and ideas that they were never able to do in the classic Fox movies too. Emma Corrin was great as Cassandra Nova. If you're not familiar with her character, they've actually been trading on a lot of story that comes from her comics in the X-Men 97 episodes recently too. Most of you will probably remember them from The Crown on Netflix. But they play Cassandra Nova with this crazy unhinged Willy Wonka style energy which is meant to be a spin on Professor X because she is his twin in the comics. Don't worry we will unpack all that stuff and those connections in the movie when I get to my breakdown video later this week. Pretty much all the main actors from the first two Deadpool movies are back. Blind Al is amazing. She's in all the trailers so you've seen a lot of her energy during the film. But if it wasn't clear, because there is a lot of talk about there being so many trailers, all the trailers only take from about the first 40 minutes of the movie. So if you feel like you're going to this movie knowing too much about it, you know nothing. There's like so much untapped stuff that they don't get into in any of those trailers. They even planted a bunch of fake leaks when they were making the movie to throw people off. So a lot of what you thought you knew about the movie might actually be wrong. And even though it was kind of borderline to talk about it, they put her in the recent trailer, so I don't consider it a spoiler if it was made it into a public trailer, but dot dot dot, just wait for it for a second. Daphne Keene did come back as X-23. She's here in the trailer here, so like I said, I don't consider it a spoiler. Probably my favorite cameo in the movie. I don't want to talk too much about the other cameos just because I'm going to do a whole separate video about that later. But her coming back was everything that I thought it would be and could be. It was amazing. There's a lot of musical Easter eggs that they bake into this too, themes from other classic Marvel movies and classic actors, but the original music they created for this, like the brand new music, was also pretty solid. I'm still pretty partial to the music in the first Deadpool movie though. I'm gonna have to watch the movie a couple more times to decide where I rank it in the Deadpool movies now. Right now, I still think that the first Deadpool movie is probably gonna be my favorite. This might be like a close second or like tied for first, and then Deadpool 2 I just feel like isn't quite as strong as either this movie or the first Deadpool movie. Once you do have a chance to see it, just post your reactions in the comments below. Please don't post spoilers on this video though. I will have a couple separate videos later this week. We will talk about all the spoilers then. Like I said, there is a post credit scene, so be sure to stay after the credits. In the way they leave things just in general, to talk about it in a non-spoilery way, as you would expect, Deadpool making as many messes as he tries to fix, things are as chaotic as ever at the end of the movie. But you do walk out of this movie feeling like the MCU has an actual direction, like it has more of a focus that it didn't have before. Hopefully they can maintain this momentum coming out of this movie into Captain America 4 next year. It seems like they're on the right track, like it seems like Kevin Feige is turning things around and this is just like the first big step in doing that. So I don't know if I'd call Deadpool Marvel Jesus, even though he seems like he's calling himself that, but he's helping save the MCU metaphorically and kind of literally in real life. The other real big reminder is that this week is Comic-Con week, so Marvel's going to do a big Hall H panel like it used to do back in the day. There'll probably be at least one big trailer they release publicly. Of course, I will do all the videos for it. whatever they wind up announcing. There'll be like a Captain America Brave New World panel. There'll be a bunch of special Deadpool and Wolverine stuff going on there. Some Fantastic Four movie reveals, maybe announcements about a couple other upcoming movies like Thunderbolts, maybe Avengers 5, because they are supposed to be filming Avengers 5 next year. 
My post credit scene video will probably post Thursday night or Friday, and my full breakdown and Easter eggs for the entire movie will post after that video. So be sure to enable alerts for my channel so you don't miss that. And if you have any special requests about what you want me to talk about during those videos, just write them below in the comments or big questions about the characters or what's happening next in the MCU just in general. Like, what does this all mean? There'll be several points in the movie where you're screaming that in the theater. Like, what does this mean? All these references. Everybody click here for my post credit scene video and that full breakdown in Easter eggs video. I'll update the links for those as soon as I post them in a couple days. Thank you so much for watching in maximum effort.